Alright guys, so in this video we're going to be doing the direct shear test and I'm standing right next to the uh, direct shear apparatus that you're seeing right here. Um, what this really consists of is a box that's going to be moving horizontally. Then we have a couple of gauges here that help us read various different quantities. So this dial here on the top is to look at the settlement or uh, contraction or the dilation of the specimen so it'll monitor uh, for us the vertical movement of the specimen. This one right here will show us the shear strain um, or basically the horizontal displacement and this right here is the load dial or uh, the load ring that we had calibrated previously. So in order to run the test the box will move in the horizontal direction and the measurements that we'll be taking will be through these three dials. So vertical, horizontal displacement, so vertical displacement, horizontal displacement, and the horizontal load. Those will be the main components that we'll be measuring throughout the test. In the next parts of the video, I'll be showing you how to prepare the specimen and place it into the direct shear box. All right, so the different things that we need for running the direct shear test is one, a funnel so that we can put in the sand into the uh, container for the specimen. This is the sand that we'll be testing. It's uh, some clean sand, it's pretty coarse particles. Uh, we have this, which is basically our um, testing specimen. Or container will be which will be filling up with sand. It's consisted of uh, a bottom plate that's right here and a top plate, which uh, come can come off of each other. As you can see, there's some movement here. The basic principle is once we have the um, sand at the correct density inside the uh, this mold, then uh, the idea is basically to shear the specimen from the top. So basically this top plate will be moving in the horizontal direction. And with the different dials, you'll be measuring, you know, vertical displacement, horizontal displacement, and, and load coming from the strength of the sand that's inside. You have to make sure at this stage where we want to prepare the specimen, we have some screws screwing the top plate to the bottom plate. We have it on both sides, so two screws here and two screws on the other side of this. You have to make sure uh, then that once we've prepared the sample and we want to start shearing the specimen to take off these screws because if we don't then we'll be measuring the shear resistance of the screws and not the soil. So that def definitely needs to come off once we're ready. This is a uh, top loading cap. So basically when we have our sand, this is uh, what we would place on the top. And this is the device where uh, we use to tap and make a flat surface on the top of the uh, specimen. This is a caliper. You may have seen it in other videos. Uh, so we use this caliper to measure various distances. So the first thing that we'll be measuring would be the size of the shear box. So I measure the different dimensions of this. So in both directions, I need to know the dimensions of the shear box. And also uh, the <clears throat> depth of it, essentially to know exactly to uh, what point I need to bring up my sand level. So. If you uh, read the instructions, you'll see that we need to measure this distance. I'll try to point to it with the caliper. So this distance right there from the bottom of the bottom plate all the way to the middle is H over 2. So we measure that and then we measure the same amount up through the top plate. Uh, and then that line basically that you see right there, that dashed line, right there would be the indication of the height uh, that you would have to prepare your 
specimen up to or basically get the sand up to that um, height from the bottom of the specimen. So the next step will be to grab sand and start uh, the air pluviation process which is basically um, adding the sand to this funnel and placing my finger at the bottom of the funnel so that the sand particles don't uh, flow through the bottom then I place it here with a height of about five centimeters and I start the air pluviation process. The air pluviation basically means to get the density of the specimen to the desired amount. So what I'll do in this one is to get some sand and pour it into my funnel. This is about um, 200 grams of soil, maybe a little bit less than 200 grams. I'll give you the exact amount. The key to this step is uh, to get the density of the specimens when we're in all three tests that we'll be doing uh, to the same level. Essentially what that means would be uh, to use the same mold, which we will be doing, use the same uh, mass or weight of the sand in all three trials and also to get it to the same height here so essentially what we've controlled is the mass and the volume of uh, the shear box or the sand that goes into it uh, thereby reaching to a consistent uh, value for the density that's a key component for running this test. So if we're doing three trials of the test, we want all three specimens to be at the same density. So the next step is to grab the bottom of the funnel and start uh, letting go from the bottom so that the sand particles will fall down. I'll be doing that. And as the sand is coming up in the shear box, I will be trying to also raise my hand slowly to maintain that drop height of about five centimeters and that way what I'm doing is controlling the speed and distance that the particles will be falling. I'll also try to fill in these corners as we're going forward. So this is how we did this part. I'm going to use this tool to kind of make the surface of our specimen flat. Usually this step requires a few iterations to get it exactly at that dashed line mark that I was showing you a little bit earlier. Sometimes you need to shake it around making sure that you're not densifying the sample but trying to get it to that dashed line. So right now if I bring it up here you'll see that the height of the specimen is right about at the dashed line. That's the desired height that I wanted it to be at. The next step is to place this top cap on and make sure that it is level and that it's flat. We don't want it to be tilting in any direction. So this is that final product at this stage. So this is what it would look like. The next step is to place our specimen inside the shear box, which I'll be showing you next. And to open up the screws and get the test going. All right, so this is the top view of the shear box and this is the controller right here which you can manually uh, set the speed of the motion basically or the horizontal motion where the box will be shearing the specimen so we'll talk about that in a second but right now I want to show you how to assemble the shear box 
or the specimen into this container right there. So what I'll need to do is adjust that a little bit. So that's how it goes in. We have um, two knobs here on the side which will help us um, secure the box. So as I move this in, you'll see that this um, gap right there is getting filled. Right, so let me just do that one more time so you see it better. So that's that. We have it secured and then we do the same thing for the other side of the box. Basically securing the shear box in. So that's that. The next step is to uh, open up the screws that I have on the box. So I'm going to open this one up. As I mentioned, if we don't open up the screws and we start the test, then we'll be measuring the shear resistance of the screws and not the soil. So opening up those two screws. So now what we would want to do is, first of all, before uh, we set up the dial gauges, this will be our loading device. So I'll be placing this on top of our specimen. Um, this has about 3 uh, kilograms of weight. This is 31, 32 grams to be exact. And this hanger down here is about... Uh, 0.196 kilograms. So that's that. And then um, these will be the weights that we'll be applying to this uh, system. I'm going to zoom out so that you can sh see the final product right now. Right. So for this test, I'm going to first start with about 8 kilograms of weight. So I'm going to place the weights here. This is essentially what's providing the vertical effective stress to our specimen, right? So at this step, what we would want to do is to calculate uh, the weight applying of this area right here to get the pressure, or essentially the uh, stress that's being applied to the soil specimen. So the next step would be to um, assemble the three different dials, although the only one that we really need to assemble uh, here would be the vertical one. The other two, which are the horizontal uh, load and the horizontal displacement, are already in place. So this is the vertical settlement dial that's placed on top of this load uh, device. And as the specimen is being sheared in the horizontal direction, it will be recording any movement of the specimen, whether it wants to dilate or if it wants to contract, right? So that's what this dial will be showing us. This dial right here is the um, dial that we use to record the displacement in the horizontal direction. And this is the load dial or, or the horizontal uh, load that is being measured as the test is being uh, is moving forward right so the only next step left is to start the test usually uh, when students are doing this test in the lab it requires at least three people uh, each person will be reading one of the dial gauges right so one person will be reading the uh, vertical displacement dial, one person would be reading the horizontal displacement dial, and one person would be reading the uh, horizontal load dial. Um, 
and one person is in charge of taking note of the measurements usually that's how it is so in total of four people uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start the device uh, when I say starting the device I'm gonna set the speed right now it's set to 0.5 millimeters per minute um, as you can see in the screen right so 0.5 millimeters per minute that is the uh, speed that this is set to and it is the standard speed for the test and what I will be doing is I'll be pressing run and at this time our test is now moving forward so right now the test is moving forward I'm actually doing it on fast forward so that you can see all the dial gauges see this one as well so there is some vertical settlement happening as well as I'm shearing the specimen and this is the final product right there we've sheared and destroyed or failed our specimen right there and with the measurements that we have we are able to construct the uh, failure envelope and measure the friction angle from this test so after placing back the specimen to the original position the next step would be to uh, collect the sand that's inside the box and uh, remake a specimen this time uh, double the amount of weight or load that was applied to the specimen so that would be our second trial and then our third trial would be to again double up the load one more time and repeat the test so in total of three times the masses that we use the first time was eight kilos and then we go to 16 kilograms and the last test is at 32 kilograms.